Alright, what's up guys? It's Robin here and this video is going to be my patch 11.5 guide. I think the meta is already pretty settled down now, so I don't think they're going to make any more big changes because of uh, uh, worlds. This guide should probably last throughout the end of the set. Maybe there might be a, a few few changes where it, make, it might make some comps stronger or weaker, but generally I'm pretty sure the meta is already pretty stable now. This guide should be pretty useful until the end of the set. So I'm going to be linking this uh, notepad in the description below and I'm also going to be linking the uh, imager with all the comp lists. First of all, I think the most important thing is you need to familiarize yourself with all the late game comps in the game. The comps right now are Kale, Slayers, Keepers, Mages. I think these four are by far the strongest comps in the game. They have extremely high caps and you'll usually see them winning the lobbies. The other comps are going to be Fabled, Enlightened Talon, Brawlers, Sivir, Six Dragon Soul, Elderwood Mages, Ninjas, and Warlords. And there's reroll comps like Yasuo reroll, Diana reroll, and Tristana reroll. I'm not going to talk too much about the reroll comps because they're pretty like self-explanatory. You just reroll for the three cost units and you just like play supporting units around it. And uh, it's already been talked about a lot in previous guide videos, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. The Tristana reroll uh, is pretty new and it's pretty strong right now, but I'm not going to dive much into it because I don't really know like how to play it. But basically it's like four spirit, four, four, uh, four sharps, whatever, Tristana carry. But I will be going over uh, these comps. For the comps that also appear in old guides or in like every guide, I'll kind of like just skim through it. So first of all, we have Kale. So Kale also been in a lot of guides before. This is a basic Kale comp. It's going to be, um, you know, Kale, Kindred, Yumi, plus Frontline. So this Frontline can either be Sedge or Aatrox. Uh, it can also be Vanguard, Sedge, Aatrox. But I actually prefer the 4 Divine version now because it act the 4 Divine actually helps Kale survive a lot. Like right now, there's a lot of uh, Trindamere Slayer players where Trindamere just spins to the back line and kills Kale in one shot. But with 4 Divine, she usually can survive Trindamere and just burst Trindamere down before kale dies it's also good against like aso it's good against, it's a good against a lot of matchups in the case that you don't have azir and you're going to get aatrox grabbed she usually survives uh, a lot of the damage being dealt to her when she gets grabbed so i actually like the four divine version better it's also way 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 cheaper than the sedge aatrox version so um this one's really good but basically you know aura items on kindred kale for kale um after playing tons of kale games i realized that you actually need um you actually prefer two Offensive items, one defensive item on Kale. So, so right here, it's GA, Gwinsu's, Jeweled Gauntlet. Uh, Gwinsu's and Jeweled Gauntlet are both offensive items, and then uh, GA is the defensive item. I find myself, whenever I have two defensive items, like let's say if I have uh, GA and QSS, I end up not doing enough damage. Also, another thing, if I have RFC, so RFC is actually also considered a defensive item so if you have whenever i play ko and i have ga and rfc or rfc and qss i end up not doing that much damage it also depends like how many chalices and zeeks you have but generally uh you want to have two offensive items with one defensive item uh the, def the defensive item can be ga it could be qss it could be rfc um kale is also very 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 uh flexible you don't even need like these items you can literally I've won games where I had like Morello on Kale or like Rabadon's like full AP Kale is totally fine. Um, I've won games where I didn't have Zeke's. So uh, this is just very, very, um, it's a very, very strong comp and it's very, very flexible because the only items you like, you, you can, you just need to stack Kale and some or items and you're, you're done. Uh, this Kale, uh, this, this comp, I think it's, um, it has a very, very high cap, but it's very hard to position because if Kale dies, your whole comp is useless. It's all about Kale 1v9. So you actually need to position really well. Um, so that's why Azir is really good in this comp. Because if you have Azir, you can put the two soldiers here. And then if you don't have QSS, you won't get grabbed by Aatrox, which is really, really important. Um, but generally positioning, you just want to move Kales to the right side, depending on where, like, to dodge Aesols, to dodge Trinomirs, to try to avoid the uh, CC from the front, like the Sedge ults, the Aurelia ults, stuff like that. You also can move Aurelia. Late game, you can move Aurelia, depending on where their clump is to get in a good Aurelia value. You can move Lee Sin to see who you want to kick out. And for Shen, uh, Shen is actually very important because Shen actually counters a lot of uh, units right now. Like, it counters Sejuani. If you put Shen right in front of Sejuani, Shen will cast before Sejuani, and then Sejuani will be forced to ult backwards, which is really, really huge. Shen also counters Trinomir, because if Shen can taunt Trinomir, and then, and then Trinomir t uh, spins, he'll actually spin to Kale and just like walk back to Chen, which is really good. If you're playing Kale and you're just like losing every fight, it's probably because of positioning. So you can actually uh, outplay a lot of people with proper positioning. The next comp is going to be Slayers. Okay, so Slayers is like, I said it before, it's one of the hardest comps to play. 
because you can if there's so many variations of it you can play olaf carry you can play trinamere carry you can hit you can play samira carry so um but this is like a general board you're going to be playing olaf trinamere and pike and then depending on like depending on what two star you hit or whatever items you have that's who you stack if you're playing olaf carry though you do want to play the three dragon soul so uh, usually it's going to be swain plus one the last one doesn't really matter um tristana is good because if you end up playing samira it's a good sharpshooter for tristana um, but sometimes you won't hit Swain, right? So you take out Swain, you can literally... It, the Dragon Souls are just Dragon Soul bots. So you can just play uh, Aesol as well. It doesn't really matter. It's only to buff Olaf. Um, when you're playing Trainer Mary Carry, though, you do want to play the Duelist. So if you don't have Lee Sin yet, you're going to be playing Jax. Or you're going to be playing Kalista. If you play Kalista, you can actually get the Cultist buff with if you're playing Aatrox and Pike. Obviously, you do want to... Be, if you hit Lee Sin, you all, always want to play Lee Sin. Because Lee Sin's, like, super broken right now. So something like this. So this comp is basically, like... It's going to be your three slayers and then something that buffs the slayers and then frontline or utility units. So like if you're playing Olaf Carry, you know, it's Dragon Soul. If you're playing Trinomir, it's the Duelists. Um, and then frontline is usually, usually, usually uh, Aatrox Sedge. But you don't need to be too fixated on Aatrox Sedge. Like you don't even need to play Aatrox Sedge. I've won games where I just played, uh, I just played like a Morgana plus like, uh, I, I just played like a Divine Frontline. So I played Morgana. I played Aurelia. I played like Jax, something like this. And I had Morello on Aurelia. And this this board is actually really, really strong as well. And you can either play Olaf carry or Trinomir carry. Like, it doesn't matter. So, like, basically, like, the core of the comp is literally this. It's, like, it's three Slayers. And then Dragon Soul, if you're playing Olaf carry. If you're not playing Olaf carry, you don't need to play Dragon Soul. You can just Tekken Mystic. You can play four... Du if you're playing Trinomir carry, you can play four Duelists with Jax. You know, Lee Sin. Even, like, Fiora. You can just play Fiora still and play four Duelists. Or you can play Kalista in which is pretty good, and then you have the three Slayer, four Duelists, and then you can just play Sedge, Aatrox, Ornn, whatever. Uh, usually, when you're playing Slayers, though, you, you can't fit in. It's hard to fit in uh, Mystic, because there's a little bit too many units. You can probably only fit it in at 9, but yeah, I think that's baits a lot of people, like, because you usually, a lot of people will usually want to fit in Mystic late game, but in Slayers, you just can't really fit it in, so you just get dizzy. But what I found out is that you just can't fit in Mystic, and you're just playing no Mystic if you're playing Slayers. Your win con is probably going to be Samira too, so once... I think that the, 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 uh, the good Slayer players know when they are stable, and they will stop rolling at level 8, and just go 9 to try to hit Samira 2. Once you hit Samira 2, usually you will transfer the Trinomir or Olaf items and sell it and transfer it onto Samira, and then you just play a random sharpshooter with it, and, in, and Samira will be your new, new carry with like Aatrox Sedges, uh, uh, legendaries like Yone, Set, Azir, whatever. Slayers by far has the highest cap in the game, and I think Trinomir and is, is like unbelievably broken right now. So abuse Slayers while you can, but it is a very, very expensive comp, so you can't really play this if you're like playing from behind. Next, we have the Keeper comp. So this comp uh, has been gaining popu popularity lately, and it's been it's been performing, performing really well in the uh, NA regional qualifiers. So basically, this comp, the only items you need, you don't really need, but the only items, the items that you want are GA and Morello on Kennen, and then you want like Hodge on Zaya. And that's the only thing you need. Um, preferably, you do want the Keeper Chosen. Um, any Keeper Chosen will actually work. Like, Rakan Keeper is good. Kennen Keeper, obviously, is probably the best one. Um, Zaya Keeper or Zaya Executioner also works. Elise Keeper works. Jarvan Keeper works. Uh, whatever. But you're going to be playing the six, six Keepers. And then um, you want to play... A Aatrox is, like, super, super, super important in this comp because you want to grab people in for Kennen ults. Aatrox is the, your only um, backline access. So if you don't have Aatrox, this comp actually doesn't really work that well because you'll only be hitting the tanks and then the carries will be in the back just like freely hitting you. But but the, the, the true carry of this comp is actually not Kennen, it's actually Zaya. Zaya is super, super strong. You usually do need a Zaya too in this comp to try to get a top four. Other items on Zaya is good. It's like 80, any 80 items. Like Last Whisper is good. BT is good. Deathblades good. Gwinsu's is good. You know, whatever. Um, She's also good with AP items because she does both AP and AD. So, like, Rabadon's Jeweled Gauntlet is also good on her. So, she's actually very flexible. Uh, you do want to have the GA on Kennen, so he's guaranteed to cast once and usually twice. And Morello is just a really, really good late-game item to kind of put Morello on their whole team. Uh, you do want to get the Orn because it gives you Elderwood with Rakan and Zaya, And it also gives you Vanguard with Aatrox. Getting an early Orn is usually the uh, win con for this comp. Try to stack as many Orn items on your team. I if you have to roll at 7, th th this, comp is this comp is good because it allows you to roll at 7 and level 6 if you have to like let's say you're commit you have the GA Morello built and you want to play keepers you could roll at 6 for like a 4 keeper or 2 keeper with like Rakan 2 Jarvan 2 Elise 2 
and cannon one or something and you can make a decent four keeper comp and then at level seven you'd roll down again for cannon two maybe hit a zaya one atrox one or something and then you go eight and you go for the orn something like that that's why this comp is really strong because it allows you to roll at like six seven and eight so that's why it's, it's super strong uh positioning you can't really uh move your whole keeper uh like as fast as the opponent usually but you do want to be on the side same side as the opponent usually zaya the reason why zaya is in this corner is because zaya can actually if, if, if she's in this corner she can actually hit the back line if they're like top left like if they have like kale or aso here if you play your zaya here zaya will actually usually like one shot them so that's what you want to keep uh keep in mind but when you're playing good players they'll see you trying to move your whole board so then they'll just like move like two units and you cannot move usually you, you just can't really like out position if enemy players have shroud you know you can't really out position probably just spread out your units but you lose like the six keeper value so i don't know about that uh that's the basic uh basic gist of this comp it's it's pretty simple you're just playing all keepers plus aatrox and orn the next comp is going to be mages specifically seven mage you could play different variations of this comp like five mage or three mage but i think i actually think the seven mage is the strongest because seven mage allows your aso to just one shot the entire board pretty easily so it's like extremely strong it's really easy to play as well all you need is a mage chosen and you just pick up all the mages you're going to be staying in level seven usually to roll for any three lulu three and you'll probably hit the aso two at seven when you when you because you're rolling so much and then the items you want on aso typical aso items ga jeweled gauntlet hodge you can replace hodge with gunblade basically it's a healing slash damage item and then you want the uh, you want tank items on annie qss is very very important on annie i think it's best in slot just because if you don't have qss late game they can just put a lease in here and it'll just kick your annie out which is which feels bad but yeah the, the weakness of this comp obviously it's aatrox um so if if, the, if you're going against enemy aatroxes you actually can't corner your asol so you have to put asol like this like something like this so they get grabbed you do want to put brand on the same side as asol because brand has uh 890 range so that means he'll never move from the spot but tf actually has 660 range so if you put tf if you're trying to dodge aatrox and you put tf next to uh asol the tf might walk up and then the asol might still get pulled you might want to tech into azir and you just take out either elderwood or dragon soul a azir soldier azir soldiers are way more worth than one of those traits and then you can just put the azir soldiers here your asol will not get pulled which is like super important and positioning you're just positioning uh asol on whichever opposite side their carries are it's pretty easy uh the next comp is the fabled vanguard mystic comp uh this comp pretty much the same you know vanguard mystics if you get a vanguard chosen you do want to tech in six vanguards and if you get the mystic chosen you want to take in four mystic for vanguard it's pretty simple items on nico ga uh rabbit uh jeweled gauntlet or gunblade i think core is ga gunblade and then you want a damage item so either it's jeweled gauntlet or rabbit but Nico's also very, very uh, flexible. Like, you could get away with GA, like, Hodge Hodge. It's not the best, but it still works. You could get away with, like, uh, Blue Buff, Hodge Hodge, whatever, play for top four. But GA and Gunblade are super important because if Nico dies, this comp is actually, like, has no other damage. So, other than Nautilus, GA and healing item is really important, Nico. Uh, basically, all the tank items you usually do want to put on Nautilus uh, so he can carry. He's like, he's, like, your secondary carry. Chalice is on Yumi. And you do want to... You actually, like, for this comp, I think staying 7 and rolling for Nautilus 3 is usually a bait, unless you have a ton of Nautiluses already. Usually, you should rush 8 to go for the Sedge 2, Aatrox 2, and try to get an early Orn, because this comp uh, scales super well with uh, if you get an Orn in really early. Uh, next up, we have the Talon comp. Same comp as usual, Enlightened Talon, uh, GA, IE, Last Whisper, basically AD items on Talon, and then the Merlo on Morgana. Not going to go too much into it, but this is also very strong right now. Especially in uh, the keepers are getting um, more popular and popular. Morgana actually wrecks the keeper positioning, the keeper clump. So this this comp is actually really really good into keepers. You just use Yone to shred their, uh, you shred them their resistances, and then Morello will just like destroy them, and then Talon will just clean up. The next comp is the uh, eight brawler Shivana comp, also a pretty old comp. Uh, you're just playing. You, if you have a brawler chosen, you just play eight brawlers. Pretty simple. You go eight and try to roll for Shivana three, get the set. Get the early Orn in, try to stack Orn items. Um, Shivana, Runons, I think is absolutely essential on Shivana. Because if you don't have Runons, it actually lowers your DPS by a lot. So if you don't have Runons, I wouldn't actually play this comp. Um, and then other items, the other two items are super, super flexible. Like you can literally have anything. You can have Deathblade, RFC, uh, you could have um, Gwinsu's, D Claw, QSS, like, you know, BT, Last Whisper, whatever. I think Runons is the only one that's like super important. All the AP, AP items usually go on set. But you usually don't itemize for set in this comp because you don't even know if you're going to get set for sure. 
So set usually gets the items you get from linking carousels. Uh, the next comp, we have the Sivir comp. I'm not sure if we talked about this in the previous guide, but this is basically Sivir carry. You're going to be playing Sivir plus another sharpshooter, which is going to be Teemo. You're going to be playing Yumi for Spirit, so it buffs Sivir's attack speed. And then you're going to be playing Sedge Aatrox as frontline, ideally. You're going to play the Zillion to, to uh, round out the Cultist and Mystic. And then usually you do want to play, and then the next few spots are pretty uh, pretty open, but you usually do want to play the Yazir just for utility. And, or you can play, you know, for, depending on your chosen, like if you have a spirit chosen, you can play another spirit, you can play Kindred for four spirits. If you have a sharpshooter Sivir, you can play um, another sharpshooter for four sharpshooters. Um, items on Sivir, you do, I think the core item is going to be QSS and Last Whisper. If, you, if Sivir does not have Last Whisper, she actually doesn't deal that much damage. And if she doesn't have QSS, you're going to get uh, a lot of fights. You're going to cast, and but you're going to get stunned. So she gets like no value. I think best in slot is going to be QSS, Last Whisper, and an RFC. But the RFC is pretty flexible. You can have Runons. You can have Gwinsu. You can have IE, whatever. Next comp, we have the Six Dragon Soul Aso Carry comp. I, I would kind of uh, pair, this, pair this in with the Mage comp. Because I feel like Mage comp is basically you're playing around Aso. So you can either play the 3 Mage variant, the 5 Mage variant, or the... 7 mage variant this is pretty much the three one of the three mage variants you're just playing three mages with brand and lulu and you're playing like six dragon soul in the front i would i would usually only go this comp if i end up getting like a dragon soul chosen um either dragon soul shivana or dragon soul a soul or something and then i have really good a soul items then I'll, I'll probably pivot into this comp i don't have a mage chosen i'll play six dragon soul a soul you you could frontline a soul to try to get the initial dragon soul bonus and just like one shot everything um or you can just backline it, it it's totally fine um, Shivana is going to be the secondary carry here. So if you have like a Runons, you can put it on Shivana. Usually I like playing Shivana more than Olaf because if you're playing Olaf, you you need to have Slayers and that, that's just like too many units on the board, you know? If you don't have Swain yet, you're, you are going to be playing Olaf or Tristana. In this comp, it's basically like all the Dragon Soul units are bait and then it's, it's just a soul 1v9. The other units you're going to round out are usually going to be, you're going to be pairing with Braum. So you're going to play Aatrox and Sedge. Basically, you need more frontline. So Aatrox Sedge is good, you know, Morg, Morg plus plus Swain is good, you know, whatever. You can play maybe like Aurelia, Aurelia, Jax or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just like whatever frontline you can get. But usually it's going to be Aatrox Sedge because it pairs with Braum pretty well and it stalls a lot of time. The next comp is going to be Elderwood uh, Aesol comp. I mean, this is another, this is probably another Aesol variant, right? It's like a three mage Aesol variant. Not going to talk too much about this comp. Talked about it infinite times. You know, you base you can go into this comp if you hit like an Elderwood chosen, or if you end up getting an Elderwood spat, you can uh, pivot into this comp, put the Elderwood spat on Asol, and then play this comp. Like I would only play this comp if I have Elderwood spat because this comp is actually not that strong now, and it, you're basically playing for top four unless you have the Elderwood spat on Asol. Uh, next, I'm going to be talking about the uh, Ninja Akali carry comp. Um, I think I've talked about this comp before too, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You're just playing four ninjas, um, four assassins, and then like um, Yumi to round out the spirit. Yumi Diana to round up Spirit uh, Mystic. Akali recently got buffed, so this comp actually got stronger, but it's still not nearly as strong as like all the Esther comps. But you you do want the RFC on Akali, you want the uh, IE, and you want GA. Uh, the last comp I'm going to be talking about is the Warlord comp. I personally have not played this comp this patch, but I think it's still viable if you do get like an early Katarina with good Katarina items, or if you get like a Warlord chosen. It's it's the same thing. You you can either stay at level seven to two three star all the Warlords three star and then go eight to three star Katarina. Or you can just push levels and play for a Trinomir secondary carry. Um, you can play just play Katarina 2. You can try to hit a Samira, which rounds out your board perfectly with the Slayer's Sharpshooter. And you can just play for Samira or something. Um, generally, I don't think this comp is too strong. If you're going to play Warlords, you, you'd, rather, uh, you'd rather play uh, Trinomir carry. You're going to be stacking Trinomir instead of Katarina with like Trinomir items. And then you're just uh, probably playing for top 4 with uh, Trinomir carry.